everybody, Captain Dave Schneider, it's a guy life. Welcome back to the studio table. Uh, for those of you who've been in my house recently and kind of gotten a mini tour, you've been here before. I had somebody check out the bass behind me and they just said, oh my god, that thing does not, the mount does not do, or the, the camera doesn't do that fish justice. So hopefully all of you will someday maybe get to see that up close and personal. I'm here specifically to talk to you about my shiner rig, all right? Um, I want to go into detail about it. I've done this before, but I want to do it very specifically. You guys have been just smacking, just smacking the fish, um, shiner fishing. Today, it, but it's been, you know, I say that, it's been slow, but we've been smacking big fish. Uh, today, uh, fished in the rain in the afternoon. It rained all afternoon, um, but I purposely pushed the, the trip back because I wanted to fish in the afternoon because the afternoon bite has just been better. And, uh, and it worked. We caught a six pound, 12 ounce largemouth. Um, I might throw the picture of that in today here. I may not, uh, but I had a really great time with a couple of fellas uh, from originally from the upper Northeast and uh, they, they live down here now. Uh, and, and anyway, but we had a great time. I, I didn't vlog that but, uh, because of the rain, but, uh, um, but we'll talk more about that. Specifically though, I wanna talk about how I rig my shiner rig. First of all, um, as you can see here, I have a, uh, um, I use a, an ardent reel for my shiner fishing. This is an ardent magnum reel. This is a saltwater inshore reel. It's a spectacular reel. It is the perfect deal for shiner fishing. It's got a big spool. I've got, uh, I've got 65 pound braid on here right now and that's usually what I fish. Sometimes I'll fish 50 pound braid. Um, and if I'm throwing the shiners, if I'm throwing the shiners in on a rig like this, where I don't have any sort of a, a weight, if I'm just doing a weightless rig, if I'm throwing this deal, then I'm going to put, you can see the top here, the top's here and the, and the, and the hook's here. I'm gonna use heavier braid on this rig uh, because it's gonna be in much heavier cover. I literally flip the shiners into holes and pockets in the, gar in the junk. All right. If I'm going to fish on a drop shot style, then I usually go with 50 pound braid. It's quite frankly, it's enough. Um, and, and I use the drop shot 100%. I want to get right into this and I want to show you, uh, I want to show you what I do here step by step. And these are all the pieces and parts. I've got a little B-roll that I've shot. Maybe I'll go through that right now. But, but, but first things first, I, I have, and you know, it's about any kind you have, it's probably fine. But I have the, um, I have the bobber stoppers, and, and these are the, the ones made by Jethro. Those are the ones I get at the marina. I like them. This is a glass bead. I like a glass bead over any kind of a uh, um, over any kind of plastic bead, and the only reason why is I found out that it makes a nice little click sound when the when the float hits it if a fish is maybe taking it real quick, and that's just been an innocent byproduct that's worked out really good. I use a very diminutive float. Um, it's got a split side. It's got two. Uh, stoppers that come out of either end of it. You feed these on, run the split line through it, and that's how you use it. This is the second smallest float they sell at the marina in this style. I, I apologize, I should have a better uh, name for, or better numbers, but this is the one I use, all right? Now I also keep this tool handy because generally the, the, the float will, sh will show up with, and I don't know if I can line this up or not, but it has a, it's got, it's got a, it doesn't, the line doesn't go all the way through it. There's a little bit of uh, styrofoam in there. So I always take this tool, the very first thing I do is I push this tool through, and I get the styrofoam out just like that. You can see it comes right out the end. I got it. And then against my dentist's wishes, I grab it by my teeth, pull it out. I hang out of this. This is just another piece out of another bobber. I just have an extra. So now the bobber is ready to go. There are the two end pieces. Um, the next phase of this thing is going to be the hook. Of course, I use the trocar uh, hook. I, this is actually the, the hook that they uh, use specifically for uh, tube baits. And I, they send them to me before they put the plastic on them. Guys, this is absolutely the best shiner hook I've ever used. It's science, 35% less effort, sets the hook into the fish, past the barb. When you're dealing with young people and the ladies and even some fellas that just don't have a big hook set, this will bury the barb. That's the hook I use 100% of the time. This is a four aught. Some of the times the shiners are smaller and this gets a little on the big side. I have some three aught that I'll go to and I actually have some five aughts if I get some really big shiners. But this is generally day in and day out. Now this is, the, this is the one you can see. I hope you can see it here, maybe you can't. But this is one of the ones that I soldered myself. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm gonna do a video on how to solder the hooks two different ways uh, coming up. The next thing, I, in fact, let me tie from here and then I'll talk more. I've gotta reach down for this line twice now. <laughs> but let me tie, let me start by, let's get this thing going. Again, I'm gonna put my glasses on here. And I'm gonna start by just running the line through the end of the bobber stopper here, just like so. And again, this is 65 pound braid. You're gonna push it through just slightly, uh, just like that. 
grab the bobber stopper pull on the wire and it just pulls the line just like that and you have a bobber stopper on your line just like that step one step two put your uh I extend it a little bit. Step two is to put your glass bead on. You put the glass bead on mostly because you want you don't want your bobber to catch in your bobber stop. Sometimes this plastic will catch in the rubber and it sticks. You don't want that. All right. Next, you're going to get the bobber put on. I usually I put the pieces on and then reassemble it. You want to go big end to small end. So here's a big end in, small end to the middle. Let's see if I can get this done in a reasonable amount of effort here without taking too much time. There it goes. There's one. Now again, big end here. Big, big end here, going to small end, just like that, because that's how they come together in the float. And again, push it through here, just like that. Now, you can see I'm at this point here with uh, the bobber stopper, the bead, and the float. Next up, I'm gonna extend this a little bit so I have more of a tie. I'm gonna tie this in this drop shot weighted rig, okay? I'm just extending this. And the reason, because you can easily convert from that, just cut the weight off and you've got a, you've got a weightless rig, and I do that all the time. Key thing about going, key thing about doing this here, guys, is it's a drop shot. So you got to make sure your hook is up as you go through the line this way. All right, I'm going to feed it through like this. I use a standard Palmar knot. I'm going to come back through the other way. Hopefully, <laughs> sometimes this heavier braid is not super easy to feed through, but mm, get a little moisture on it. Sorry, guys. All right, there it comes. And now, now I have a standard Palmar loop, just like this. And I've got the loop in this end here. We have the loop in this end here and the rest of it's right here. So I'm going to grab the deal, the float. I'm going to pull about 24 inches of line um, out because I'm going to have somewhere between a 16 and a 24 inch drop on my drop shot. Okay, you just take your overhand knot. It's a, again, standard drop shot. If you've never tied a drop shot, this house done. All right, I'm going to feed it through just like this. That's how you tie a polymer. You want to make sure your stuff lays properly. I usually like to pull on both the tag and the main line here, but the key thing is I want those loops to lay on top nicely. I want them to lay on top of each other. And now at that point, I'm going to cinch it up real snug, which I've just done. Now here's the key. It's a drop shot. So with the hook up, you take your tag end, which is this end here. The tag end is a piece that you have that, you know, you'd normally cut off here. And you're going to drop that through, again, the eye of the hook. And that's going to cause the, the bait to kind of stand up on the line, just like that. And I'm going to pull it all the way through, just like that. Pull it snug it tight, and that's what you get. That, that's what your drop shot looks like here. Again, I've got the bobber on top of it. Now, now I'm going to install the bobber. I'll take the, there's a split in the side of the bobber. I'm gonna come in the side of it just like this. Joanna, would you come check the thing, make sure it's still recording? Yeah. I'm gonna come in the side just like this here, and I just feed it through just like that, all right? Stick this end in. Stick this end in, just like so. Okay, go good. Red lights? Yes. Okay, all right, stay right there for me because I need to know if I lose my red light. Okay, so now I'm now it's pretty close to being ready to finish. If I were actually fishing weightless, I would just obviously cut my tag off here, but I'm gonna put the weight on it. I use a half ounce weight. Guys, I have played with the bobber size. I have played with the weight size. This is it. This is three years of on the water research. Um, and and I, I really feel like I've perfected this. If you go any heavier with the weight, it'll catch in the grass, you'll lose more bites. If you go any lighter, it, the, the fish will swim away with it and you'll lose the ability to keep them where you want them. The whole idea behind a weighted drop sh or a weighted shiner rig is to be able to put them right where you want them and make them stay there. Uh, in heavy wind, it's almost paramount. It keeps, it keeps the bait down too and away from the birds. There's all sorts of advantages, but there are times when you don't want to do it. And, uh, and we'll discuss that here just in a minute. Okay, I've just finished, oh, I did that off camera, but I just tied another Palomar, which is probably overkill. And, uh, and I, would you hand me a pair of scissors, babe? And then, of course, I'm gonna snip the uh, thing. Would you hand me a pair of scissors, please? Yes, I think you wanna raise it up. And Baby, I'm shooting two shots here, okay? Okay, gotcha, thank you. I got one down here. Okay. I got it down here. Okay, get my scissors here. I'm gonna cut the uh, tag off, just like that. All right, now, this is a drop shot style. That's absolutely, now I'm gonna to go to the big camera here. This is ready to fish, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, and this is key, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna set the, the height of the float. What I want here is when this bait, when this goes to the bottom of the water, like this here, I want, the, eventually this is gonna go like this, and your float's gonna float, just like that. What I want, if it goes under, obviously you need to move this up until you get it like this. I want it to lay on the surface, just like that. that that's how I want it. I want it on the surface like that with the, with the stopper about that far away. That allows me to see 
where the shiner is going all the time. I can see when he turns and faces another direction. It gives me so much good quality feedback on what the shiner is doing. It's just, it's just something I always do. All right, now let's prep the hook. At this point, whether I use a drop shot or a weightless, I still do the same prep work on the hook. And there's two very important things. You have two problems with shiner hook. First of all, if the shiner slides all the way up the hook, this hook will rotate and if you'll hook the shiner in the back of the head, just like I'm hooking my thumb in the back of my thumb here, you'll hook them in the back of the head, you won't catch anything. Enter the plastic disc. Now this particular disc operation is made by a company um, up in Virginia and it's called the Hook Pal. This thing, I'm actually gonna do a little deal on the Hook Pal later, but this is, this is, the, this is perfect. This, is, I, this thing is pre perfect for this deal. I take the Hook Pal, I put my disc in it just like this. I'm gonna center my hook just like this here. I'm gonna punch it through just like that. Now what I've created here is I've created a keeper that keeps the shiner right up here on the hook. The shiner is going to be right in this area of the hook and it stays there pretty good. Now it will slide around a little bit but for the most part it stays right there and it's it's just perfect. It's a perfect deal. Now I'm going to hook my shiner underneath the nose, right up underneath the chin rather and through the nostril and I'm going to hook them just like that and then after I've got the shiner on I'm going to take a spent piece of soft plastic all right, I just cut them up, and I'm going to put this right over the hook, just like, so I probably shouldn't have worn a blue shirt for this exercise today, sorry about that. And anyway, I just put, pop it past the bar, just like that. And that is my finished hook for shiner fishing, obviously, minus a shiner. But that's what I have. I've got the keeper, the keeper, and I'm ready to fish. Now, if I were going to fish this without any weight, obviously, I would just cut this off. All right, guys, so listen. That's, that's the shiner rig, the greatest shiner rig on the planet, at least on Lake Okeechobee, I do believe. Um, I've got some very specific ways that I fish it. I'll talk about that in my next video. I'll talk about how I go about explaining the bite and what I get my guests to do. Do me a favor. If you love the video, if you even like it a little bit, hit the like button. Share it. This is an important one. If you're going to ever shiner fish, you need to know this stuff. This is tried and true. This is the great, this is the deal. Oh, by the way, the rod is a Shakespeare ugly stick. Guys, it couldn't get more inexpensive than a Shakespeare Ugly Stick. I get the GX2. It's seven foot. I've already got some B-roll on this, but it's seven foot, uh, medium heavy action. It's got the perfect parabolic bend. When you're fighting a big fish, it bends like this. Graphite goes like this. And I really believe you'll tear hooks more often with a graphite rod than you do a composite rod like this. It's got so much backbone with the braid. It's just, it's just the perfect rod and reel combination. $39 for the rod. I think the retail on the reel is about $159, $169, somewhere in that area. Uh, you can find that at ArtandOutdoors.com. And uh, Captain Dave Schneider, share it, like it, subscribe for God's sakes. We're building a fire. Thanks for watching. See you